Hello Chem 1210 students. In this short video, we'll discuss ionic bonding and the energetics of ionic bonding. We'll focus on lattice energy, which is the energy required to completely separate one mole of a solid ionic compound into its constituent ions in the gaseous phase. This is known as the lattice energy. Ionic bonds result from the attraction between ions of opposite charge. This is also known as Coulombic attraction. And it occurs when ions of opposite charge come together. When they come together, energy is released and a crystal lattice of ions is formed. The energy required to separate one mole of a solid ionic compound into respective gaseous ions is given by the lattice energy. The lattice energy is dependent on the electrostatic potential energy of the two charged particles and the distance between their nuclei. Q1 and Q2 are the respective charges between the two particles and D is the distance while K is a constant. Lattice energies can be estimated using the principle of Hess's law in a process known as the Born-Haber cycle. With a potential energy diagram, we can depict the dissociation of solid sodium chloride into the gaseous ions. The thermochemical equation for this process provides us with the lattice energy. This is an endothermic process and delta H is greater than zero. We'll calculate delta H lattice using Hess's law and delta H of formation as well as ionization and electron affinity data. Let's begin with the delta H of formation for sodium chloride itself. That is the formation of sodium chloride from its constituent elements in their standard states. This would give half a mole of chlorine gas combining with one mole of solid sodium to form sodium chloride and the delta H of formation for this reaction is minus 411 kilojoules. Reversing this equation, as well as the sign, gives us our starting point. And we can begin by writing a series of Hess's Law equations. Once we reverse the delta H of formation of sodium chloride, we can see that we'll need to eliminate sodium from our equation to provide gaseous sodium ions. In addition, we'll need to eliminate chlorine gas from our equation and provide chloride gaseous ions. This will give us our desired overall equation, which will be the sum of these three equations. But for equation two and equation three, delta H is unknown. Let's begin by determining the delta H for the formation of sodium ions in the gaseous state. We begin with the delta H of formation of gaseous sodium from its constituent elemental sodium in its natural state. This delta H of formation is found in tables and is positive 108 kilojoules. Furthermore, the conversion of sodium to sodium ions both in the gaseous state, is known as the ionization energy of sodium and is found in tables to have an energy of plus 496 kilojoules. This is the ionization energy of gaseous sodium. When we combine these two reactions, the sodium ions cancel out and we're left with sodium solid transformed into gaseous sodium ions and an electron in the ionization of that sodium metal. The sum of the two enthalpies gives us a new enthalpy of plus 604 kilojoules for the vaporization and ionization of sodium. A similar process for chlorine involving electron affinity begins with the formation of atomic chlorine 
from diatomic chlorine. This is a delta H of formation for chlorine atoms from chlorine in its natural state, which is diatomic chlorine gas, and has an energy of plus 122 kilojoules. The capture of an electron by a chlorine atom is known as electron affinity and gives the chloride gaseous ion and has an energy of minus 349 kilojoules, again found from tabulated data. Adding these two equations allows us to cancel the chlorine atoms and provides us with the capture of an electron by half a mole of diatomic gaseous chlorine to give one mole of gaseous chloride ions with a summed enthalpy of minus 227 kilojoules. So we now have the following steps that we can add up to give our overall equation. First, we have the reversed delta H of formation of sodium chloride from its constituent elements in their standard states. Next, we take the result from above in which solid sodium becomes gaseous sodium ions with an ejected electron and has an enthalpy of plus 604. Lastly, we have the electron affinity of half a mole of diatomic gaseous chlorine to give a mole of chloride ions in the gaseous phase with an enthalpy of minus 227 kilojoules. Elimination of the common terms begins with the elimination of the sodium solid. We can also eliminate the half a mole of diatomic chlorine as we have one on either side of the reaction, and we eliminate the electron, which is also on both sides of the reaction. The resulting summation gives us the overall desired chemical equation. That is, one mole of sodium chloride solid, providing a mole of sodium ions and a mole of chloride ions in the gaseous state. The corresponding sum of the enthalpies gives us an enthalpy lattice of plus 788 kilojoules. The lattice energy can therefore be calculated using Hess's law combining the steps for the known enthalpies from tabulated data to get the unknown calculated delta H lattice. The first step in our ladder is the reverse of the enthalpy of formation of sodium chloride from the elements in their natural states. The second step in the ladder is the formation of gaseous sodium from elemental sodium. The next step is the formation of chlorine atoms from gaseous diatomic chlorine. Next, we have the ionization of gaseous sodium atoms, providing an electron. The electron affinity of a chlorine atom to give a chloride ion in the gaseous phase is an exothermic process. Finally, we have the combination of gaseous sodium ions and gaseous chloride ions providing the lattice energy as the sum of the Born-Haber cycle. Let's consider a related problem, the problem of calculating the lattice energy of rubidium chloride given the following data. The delta H of formation under standard conditions for rubidium chloride as a solid is the equation involving rubidium as a solid combining with one half mole of chlorine as a diatomic gas and this delta H of formation is minus 430.5 kilojoules. We can also find delta H of formation information for the formation of rubidium in the gaseous state. This would derive from vaporization of solid rubidium, which is rubidium in its standard state, and has an energy of plus 85.8 kilojoules. 
the ionization energy of rubidium, that is rubidium in the gaseous state, losing an electron to become a rubidium cation is plus 403 kilojoules. The delta H of formation of chlorine atoms derived from chlorine in its natural state of diatomic gas requires that we dissociate one half mole to provide us with our requisite one mole of chlorine. Remember, delta H of formation is the formation of one mole of that substance from the element in its standard state, in this case, diatomic chlorine, and would require one half mole. Electron affinity for chlorine atoms, that is the affinity of a chlorine atom for an electron to produce a chloride ion, is minus 349 kilojoules. Our goal now is to combine these equations so as to get the desired overall equation, which is the Born-Haber cycle for rubidium chloride. That is, the overall equation is the dissociation of solid rubidium chloride to produce gaseous rubidium cations and gaseous chloride anions. And this will give us the delta H lattice energy for rubidium chloride. We reverse the delta H of formation of rubidium chloride so that we have rubidium chloride as a solid on the reactant side. We add to this list of equations the sublimation of rubidium solid to rubidium gas, which costs 85.8 kilojoules of energy. The ionization of rubidium from rubidium atoms in the gaseous phase to rubidium cations and an electron that's ejected costs 403 kilojoules of energy. As before, the formation or delta H of formation of chlorine atoms from chlorine in its natural state requires half a mole of diatomic chlorine gas to dissociate and has an energy or a delta H of formation of plus 121.7 kilojoules. Finally, the electron affinity of a chlorine atom for that electron is minus 349 kilojoules to produce the chloride ion in the gaseous state. We can eliminate those substances that exist on both reactant and product sides, starting with the rubidium solid. We can also eliminate the half mole of diatomic chlorine, as well as the gaseous rubidium, as well as the electrons and the chlorine atoms. Adding it all up together gives us our desired reaction, which is rubidium as a solid, rubidium chloride, I should say, as a solid, dissociating into gaseous rubidium cations and gaseous chloride anions. The sum of the delta H's for each of these processes gives us the delta H lattice energy for this process as plus 692 kilojoules. This is consistent with our expectation that it takes energy to disassociate a crystalline lattice of rubidium chloride as a solid into the gaseous ions. That delta H lattice energy is a measure of the ionic bonding between the rubidium cations and the chloride anions. And calculations using Hess's law allows us to use tabulated data to arrive at that determination.